if I asked you to describe a healthy diet, I bet you'd come up with some examples right away. Lots of fruits and vegetables, of course. Go easy on the desserts. Avoid fast food. You've heard these kinds of things since middle school health class. But what if I tweaked the question just a little? Describe a healthy social media diet. Not so easy to verbalize, right? Dr. Carrie Barron, psychiatrist and associate professor at the University of Texas, says, just as what we eat impacts well-being, our digital diet influences what we think, feel, do, and say in the moment or over the long haul. Health is Wealth is presented by Meridian Health Services with support from Lifestream Services. The Pew Research Center surveyed teenager social media use in 2023 and found that Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok were used by more than half of U.S. teenagers. And at the top of the list was YouTube at 93%. Also important, how much time teenagers spend on those social media platforms? One out of three teens say they use at least one of these popular sites almost constantly. Tori Forster, a licensed mental health counselor with Open Door Health Services, works primarily with teenagers and children in the Muncie area, and in her practice, she's seen a link with depression. Here locally, we're seeing an increase in the relationship between social media and depression, especially in youth and teens especially after um, the COVID-19 pandemic where we were isolated, we were in quarantine, and our major form of communication was use of social media. And so during that time, um, the rate of social media use raised and we're seeing it stay up and the correlation of um, high rates of depression um, in Indiana as well. Adolescents who spend three or more hours on social media a day are more likely to suffer from mental health disorders. We're seeing the best part of people's lives on social media. We're not seeing the true parts. So we're constantly comparing ourselves to these celebrities or the things they have, the trips they go on, but we're not seeing, seeing the reality of everyone's lives. And so I am seeing that impact my kids that I work with every day and it's it's hard to see this picture of perfection and constantly compare ourselves to that. 20 percent of adolescents in the U.S. reported having at least one major depressive episode during the year 2021, including almost 30 percent of girls and 27 percent of 16 and 17 year olds. At a 2021 congressional hearing, Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg was asked some pointed questions, including this one from Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers. Do you agree too much time in front of screens, passively consuming content is harmful to children's mental health? Congresswoman, the research that I've seen on this suggests that if people are using computers and, and Could social you apps. Answer yes or no? I'm sorry. There's, Could you use yes or no? I, I, I don't think that the research is conclusive on that, but I, I, I can summarize what I've learned if that's helpful. Three years later, Zuckerberg was back on Capitol Hill. Mr. Zuckerberg, let me start with you. Did I hear you say in your opening statement that there's no link between mental health and social media use? Senator, what I said is I think it's important to look at the science. I know it's people widely talk about this as if that is something that's already been proven. And I think that the bulk of the scientific evidence does not support that. Technically, yes, Zuckerberg is right that the research doesn't really show causation, but that's because the cross-sectional studies commonly used in this research are not designed to show causation. An overview of current research on the subject concluded that, quote, extensive research on the quantity and quality of social media use has shown an association between social media use and depression in adolescents. Teens and youth who spend a lot of time on the internet were seeing more frequency of depressive symptoms such as helplessness, hopelessness, disruptions in sleep, um, lack of physical activity, low self-esteem. So we definitely see a correlation, but it's hard to say that it directly causes depression. 
In 2023, the Surgeon General put out a national advisory about social media and youth mental health. And what that means is just to bring an awareness um, nationally that there are dangers to social media. For parents, Tori emphasizes the importance of monitoring their children's social media use and teaching them about it proactively. We wouldn't hand our children like the keys to our car and say, drive it. It's just like the same thing with the internet. It's a tool, social media is a tool. And so we want to teach them how to use it because it can be a really positive thing, but it can also be really harmful if we don't teach our children responsible ways to use it. For children and teenagers, and for us adults, so much of our social media use comes down to habits. Like a rat navigating a familiar maze, our brain activity decreases drastically when we're in the middle of a familiar routine. That's the way habits work in our brains. We could end up meaning to spend 30 minutes and two hours later we're still on there and not thinking like, how did this video make me feel? Did it make me feel bad? Did it make me feel good? So I absolutely see that we have to be mindful and present and check in with our own emotions while we're scrolling through social media. So if you want to make your social media diet healthier, where should you start? Tori has a great suggestion. I think the best keystone habit would be auditing your social media. And what I mean by that is, you go through and you ask yourself after you scroll, view your content, did that make me feel better about myself or did that make me feel worse? And what you do after that is you go through and you unfollow those celebrities, those brands, the diet culture that we're following that's lowering, lowering our self-esteem, um, making us feel bad about ourselves. Because I know when I am on social media, I wanna feel inspired, I wanna laugh, I wanna feel joy. So I, I would say auditing your social media, what's coming up on that algorithm? How can we make it more tailored to being your best self? Habits are especially powerful when our cravings exist without us even recognizing them. And that's what makes auditing your social media diet such a powerful keystone habit. Hey, we've got more episodes of Health is Wealth coming, but don't rely on the algorithm to see them all. Subscribe and get every episode, including next time when I share the greatest technological innovation during my lifetime. And no, it's not the iPhone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.